I'm here in chilly Boston, about to take a look at a family, so join me. Hi, we're the Sacco family. I'm Eric. I'm Elise, and we have four children. Eric is 13. Ashley is 10. Luke and Lily are going to be four next month. I work at Boston Logan Airport. A typical work week for me is about 70 hours. I'm a stay-at-home mom. My son Eric doesn't really care for school. I'm not taking the test. Don't take it. You don't have to go to high school. All right, I won't go to high school. He doesn't really socialize with us. He doesn't eat with us. He really doesn't like us, I don't think. Look at this, look, this boy's 13 years old and he's isolated himself from the family. Ashley's the fourth grader. On helps is he set up? I feel bad for Ashley that we just don't give her enough attention and we don't give her enough time. Mickey! Luke and Lily usually have their pacifiers in their mouth maybe six hours during the day. They will not give them up. Come here. Oh, look at this. Four years old and they've got the binkies in their mouth night and day. <laughs> It's a nightmare when I come home from work. It's laundry, doing dishes. Want me to show you how to fold? I know how to fold laundry, jackass. Hold on a minute. The dad's been at work all day, and then he comes home and he starts to do loads of chores as well. Um, what's mum doing then? Hello? Hi, Dad. Judy Red. Elise is on the telephone between four and five hours a day. Hello? It's Elise. I do have an addiction to the phone. Dorothy and him go. None of my conversations are ever really important. Just out of boredom, I think. So call me back. Bye. 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 Did you figure out that $400 cell phone bill? You don't have to go to sleep. You can lie down, though. Come on. I've given up on trying to get them to sleep in their own bed. Do you want to go on with Daddy, too? The last time me and my wife slept alone in our room was probably a year ago. Right. Do you want me sleeping next to you every night alone? No, I don't care. She don't care. Oh, dear. I'm tired of the constant fighting because we can't get things under control. Put them away. Make your bed. We have a 13-year-old that is going down the wrong path. Clean up your room. Physically and mentally, I mean, I'm ready for a breakdown. Super Nanny, we need your help. More than we could imagine. Mum, don't worry, because we will set it right. And I promise you, Dad, you'll get the rest you need. I'm almost there. When I first met the family, they were pleased to see me. Obviously, glad I was there. This is Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Pleased to meet you. And this is Lily and Luke. How are you? Good. And you've got another one, right? Yes, Eric. Where's Eric, where's Eric? Eric's not home yet from school. He He's not? He home in a few minutes. Big Eric's at work, is that right? Big Eric's working. See? When Joe arrived, it was very exciting, but also nerve-wracking. You know, I was really anxious. Kind of fear of the unknown. I started to watch the family straight away. And what I saw were twins, Luke and Lily, with pacifiers in their mouth. And apparently, these binkies don't come out for nothing. You don't have to eat it all. Just take a few more bites. <laughs> when four-year-old little Luke wouldn't eat, Mum used his binky as a reward. Binky! What do you, no, you don't need a binky until you eat your lunch. <laughs> Binkies are an aid to serve a purpose for a very short period of time, and then they should be gotten rid of. And these haven't been gotten rid of. And they've now become an emotional crutch. These kids are four years old. Eventually, Mum gave in, and she let him have his binky anyway. See your lips. OK, 
how sore your lips are. And raw. At what point do you not wake up as a parent and see this and go, we need to do something about this? It's convenient for them to keep the binkies in their mouth and use the binkies as a tool when they misbehave, but actually they're not seeing the damage that it's causing here. That afternoon, young Eric did come home from school and I wasn't given the warmest of welcomes. Hi, Eric. Hi, pleased to meet you. I'm Jo. Hi, how you doing? Good. Just come from school. Mm. How was it? Yeah. Young Eric is quite detached from the family. He'll amuse himself with little video games or listening to his music station, so he doesn't have to engage in conversation with his family. I asked Eric if I could talk to him privately, so we went downstairs into his bedroom. So do you get time to hang out with your mum and dad or not the done thing, ain't cool? I don't really go upstairs that much. Don't you? Really? You don't, don't want to do it? Why? I don't know. It's quiet down here. So what about, like, your mum and dad? Do you get time to, like, hang out and do anything with them, or...? No, not really. Do they do anything where you go out as a family? Sometimes, not. I don't know. Not really. There certainly could be more communication between you and your mum and dad. Would you agree with that or not? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Some of the stuff I don't feel comfortable talking to my mum about, my dad. Right. On my way up the stairwell from my conversation, I saw that he had two condoms in his room. These are yours? What? Right, uh... Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Cool. Well, your mum and dad know about all that. Yeah. Finding condoms in a child who's 13 years old's bedroom, yeah, it's a shock. I'm going to need to talk to his mum and dad because I don't think they're going to be OK with this either. Dad came home from work shortly before dinner. Hi, pleased to meet you, Joe. Hi, Eric. Nice Hi, to meet you. Eric. Nice to meet you. There really wasn't time for me to have this chat with Dad, like, Hi, how are you doing? I mean, I just took him straight down to little Eric's bedroom, and I wanted to know what he thought about his son, who's 13 years old, with condoms in his bedroom. And are you in a place where you feel that you can actually just sit and have a conversation with little Eric? Um, as long as it's not confrontational. You know, we're fine. We can talk about video games, sports, football, fantasy football, whatever it may be. What about his puberty? Who spoke to him about sex education? Who spoke to him about responsibility in having sex? I completely backed off. I, I never had to do it before, so... Uh... So that for you was a bit daunting to have? Yeah, he's, he's grown up now. He's not a little kid anymore. Is little Eric sexually active? I don't know. Right. I would like to say no. So would I assume that those belong to his friend? He said they weren't his. Right. And I just left it at that. I think Dad's being totally irresponsible. I know it can be difficult sometimes for parents to talk about sex with their teenagers, but at the end of the day, if he doesn't, little Eric could be in serious trouble. And by that, I mean dealing with serious issues for the rest of his life. When we went upstairs, I saw that it was dinner time but little Eric wasn't interested in sitting down with his family and having that meal. Where would you normally eat? Downstairs. Eric, why don't you sit down? And in the meantime, Dad sat down at the table, but he wasn't eating either. If I wasn't so tired, I wouldn't even be sitting at the table right now. Really? What would you normally be doing then? Cleaning, clothes, laundry, chasing them around if they weren't sitting down. When you come home, a normal day for you is cleaning, doing the laundry. Yeah, washing, folding, putting away. And sure enough, Dad got up from the dining table and started to do all the house chores that Mum could have done when she was at home. Nothing. 8.45 and the twins' bedtime act was about to begin. And yes, Mum and Dad didn't even attempt to put the twins in their beds. Seriously, I knew exactly where this was going, and I thought, I might as well leave for the evening now. I've seen enough. I am extremely looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. 
Okay. Because we do need a family meeting. Okay. There's much to be resolved here. Okay. I am worried about what Jill will say during our first meeting. I will see you tomorrow. Okay. Good night. So I think we should get straight to the point because there's certainly no time to waste here. Responsibilities. When the pair of you got together, it was about how you were going to manage together. What happened to that? Well, somebody better speak because what happened to the pair of you recognising that you have responsibilities? I don't know. I think maybe we became so overwhelmed by them that it was just easier to let them kind of run the routine the way they wanted it. I mean, let's just look at the chores. You guys don't work out who will do what. How many hours do you work, Eric? 60 hours a week. 60 hours a week. And how many hours do you work at home? The same, more. All day, all night. Really? And then you woke up and realised you were dreaming, you mean? <laughs> yeah. I don't find it funny. I, I think, well, my day doesn't end sometimes. What do you mean your day don't end? It don't bloody begin. You spent time on the phone. Mm -hmm. You spent time just walking around the house, up and down. You spent time walking back and forth from a dining table with your kids. I mean, quite frankly, I don't know what you do with your hours. But I tell you one thing as a woman, if my husband's working, I do want to make sure that I'm doing what I should be doing at home. Yeah. And if now I'm making you think about that, because this is the first time I've seen you become emotional, because it's the first time you've even had to sit and think about your actions. You're right. And you need to be able to do that. Let's talk about the development of the twins. You've got the kids on pacifiers. Binky galore in this house. When you're looking at your son and he's got chapped lips that have split and broken, when you're actually having to tell your children to take the binkies out of their mouth because you can't hear them, at what point doesn't the light bulb switch on? I didn't think the binkies was that, was that major of a issue. You would rather they have the binky rather than cry, even if it's damaging them health-wise. I can't even defend myself, so... That's crazy. You have a son who's 13 years old, and I do want to talk about little Eric. There's no purpose of him feeling he can come and talk to you about things that he's going through as a teenager. I go down to his bedroom yesterday to talk to him, and I see two condoms. Emotionally, he's still a 13-year-old. I don't know a way to get through to him or a way to, to talk to him the right way. What do you expect from me? I think to most me, of all, we want exist. you to teach us how yeah, to teach, teach them. them. I want them to have boundaries. I want them to feel loved. I want them to feel that we respect them, and I want them to respect us. If I am to teach you, then you are to come into my classroom, in your home, to listen, to give me a 100% commitment, to take direction, to follow through, and to not give up. And we will. See you bright and early. Thank you. Thank you. Because Dad's doing nearly all the work and Mum's virtually doing none of the work, the first thing I want to do is put mum and dad in the same room so they can have a head-on confront about these issues. What I would like you both to do is to come to the easels and write down what you believe your responsibilities are at present. It was basically me and my wife face to face and I, I thought it was gonna lead to some sort of confrontation. Tick 
those responsibilities that you actually do. So if we both do it? Put a tick against it. It was difficult, Eric and I facing each other. We don't communicate. Mum finds excuses of why she doesn't just knuckle down and take ownership of her responsibilities. It's building up resentment. Dad's tolerance is zero. He's very cheesed off. Eric, how many points? 14. 14. And how many of those bullet points have you ticked? Nine. OK, how many bullet points do you have? I have seven. Seven. How many do you actually do of those? One. Doesn't that say something? That Eric's doing the majority of the work. Mum's taking Dad for granted, and she knows it. Do you have anything on your responsible easel here that you feel Mum could have on hers? Um... Driving them to school on occasions. What do you think about that? Driving to school. What do you think about that? It's fine. Do you think that's something you should be doing? Yeah. I mean, do you agree with it or not? I mean, at the end of the day, this is about you two. No, I talking about that. Um, I don't. I wouldn't mind driving them to school. What else do you see on this list that you believe should be a shared responsibility? You know, laundry, cleaning up the house, bath yeah. time. I, we should split it. It was uncomfortable to kind of get all of those things out and have them right in front of you to read in black and white. Does it seem fair? Yeah. Yes. I think I could add helping with the homework on mine, too. Mm, I think you should. Yeah. With her taking a lot of the chores and splitting them in half does take a lot off of my shoulder. With Mum and Dad now doing right, it's time to tackle the kids. We've got twins who are four years old, and they are constantly sucking on those pacifiers, and it really isn't any good for them. So what I'm going to do is introduce them to a very special young lady. This is our own Binky Fairy. We're going to explain to the children that the Binky Fairy came and that the Binky Fairy is collecting all the Binkies to give to the babies that need them and we're going to help the Binky Fairy. And then it was showtime. You know what this is? Look at Lily. Do you know who that is? It's the Binky Fairy. Binky That's fairy. her. She came to visit. See the net she has? So she's here today. She wants to help us collect all the Binkies and bring them to the little babies. As I suspected, Luke wasn't going to give up his pacifier without a real fight. So are you going to help us? You don't need that. You want to put a high five, Lily. Lily was more than ready to hand over her pacifier. She wanted to be a big girl. She wanted to show us all she was a big girl. Luke, on the other hand, was devastated. No. Are you going to give us? No. Dad, Dad, you have to learn to be able to do this, OK? You're a big boy now, and you don't need that binky anymore. No. Yeah. I did not think I would be able to just take the binkies away from them. Don't yeah, we're going to take the binky, OK? Yeah, the binky You're fairy a, is. The binky fairy needs it. You are a big boy now, OK? And it's not good for you anymore. I got to take it, all right? Binky! Binky! No, 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 no. And he wasn't a happy chappy. Place the Binky Fairy up somewhere in the kitchen. Yeah. You're a big boy now. But you are. Your turn to spin. After almost an hour, Luke did finally calm down. So tomorrow I want to finish off the Binky Fairy because I've got a little surprise for them. You know, I can see why parents get a little bit apprehensive about having the sex talk with their kids. But at the end of the day, Dad's got no choice. So I gave him some tips to help him along the way, and now it's down to these two men to have a conversation. I was nervous sitting down. It's a tough conversation to have. 
We don't communicate enough at all, uh, and that has to change. If you have issues in school, with issues with your friends, girlfriends, whatever it, just come to me. Ask me. I could see that within the conversation there was a lot of pause, and I know it was where Dad was revving up the courage to get on to the next topic. And I thought, this is not going to happen. So I grabbed young Eric's condoms. I thought you boys might want to talk about that. These yours? Uh, yeah, I guess. Do you need them? I guess not. I think you're way too young. As awkward as this conversation is going to be for Dad, it's absolutely vital that he have it because he could stop little Eric from making some really bad choices. Do you realize what the consequences are? Mm -hmm. What is a consequence there? You get her pregnant, there's HIV, there's a bunch of diseases. Yeah. It was an uncomfortable conversation, to say the least, but it was a relief. Now it's teaching him going forward. You get a girl pregnant, I mean, you got a, you got a, a lifetime commitment. Mentally, physically, financially. And this young? The way Dad actually handled the conversation was impressive because he was mature. I'm glad we talked. You have any questions? <clears throat> now you know you can come to me. As much as the conversation may have felt awkward for Dad, I'm really glad that he had this conversation with Eric because, let's face it, I mean, if you can talk about sex, you can talk about most things, right? On my next day of teaching, there were two issues that I still needed to take care of. First being the Binky Fairy had come overnight and left these kids some little surprises. Daddy, where's the Binky Fairy? Fly away. Guess what she brought you? What's this? Joe's Passiferi Technique Works. That one's Lukey's. That one's yours. What is it? It's your favorite. Dinosaur. Huh? Are you glad you did it now? Even though Luke was very resistant at first, as soon as he got his present, I knew that Mum and Dad knew that he would be OK. A bit of magic and a bit of willpower. Right? A bit of yeah. magic and a little bit of willpower. Yeah. And some understanding of the importance of why. Yeah. Yeah, look at them, look. Happy as Larry. And I thought it was going to be much worse, and it wasn't. Next, I needed to continue the conversation about little Eric, and Mum had a few words to add to that conversation that I felt would really make a difference. Come here quickly, three of you. I found out I was pregnant with Eric um, like two weeks before my 18th birthday. I was 17 when I found out. So um, it was it was hard. In, in all reality, you know the seriousness Yeah, of... I, know, I know. You do? Yeah. Okay. What do you know? What do you know? Um, that I can get a girl pregnant, mm -hmm. and then I can get a bunch of diseases. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think he understands a little bit, but I think that he still thinks that the whole sex thing is just glorified with his friends and, you know, TV and everywhere. It's everywhere. And, you know, I just try, I tried to explain the best I could. And more importantly, when you do something like that with someone at your age, it's not going to be as special and, and unique as if you waited and did it when you were older. But somebody you actually were in Care love about. With. It was very important for us to have that talk. I guess I just keep seeing him as my little guy and, you know, not growing up. I think it would be irresponsible for you to, to participate in sexual activity at your age. We're too young to be grandparents, and you're way too young to be a father. But I'm hoping that we're talking about it, you know, it's going to prevent him from doing that. As the day progressed, I was really pleased to see Mum was making some real progress with the house chores that needed to be done. Good for her. Before I 
leave though, there is one more issue that I need to take care of, and that's Luke and Lily's sleeping arrangements. For the first night in their new beds, Dad would be reading them stories, and Mum would be in charge of making sure that they got down for the night. You are going to sit in the middle of the two beds. Okay. On the floor. Okay. When they come out of their beds, I want you to just to turn around and say to them, it's bedtime. Okay. Okay. And place them back into their beds. The next time they come out of their beds, I want you to say nothing. Just place them back into their beds. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. And travel started as soon as Dad started to get ready to leave the room. Night night. I'll see you in the morning. I don't want to go to bed. Okay. Hey. I'll see you in the morning. No, I don't want to go to bed. I love you. <laughs> I don't want to go to bed. <laughs> Mum sat on the floor in the bedroom, and I sat nearby so I could coach her. No, not out of the bed. Lay down. You're talking. No talking. Okay. Just resume position. Okay. In the bed. As a mum, you want to comfort them. So it was really, really hard not to turn around when they were crying and say, you know, mummy's right here, you're going to be fine. And then when Lily got out of bed, Luke saw this opportunity to leg it out the room. <laughs> Luke finally settled and went off to sleep. But Lily, she was wide awake. It seems like when you're, you're sitting there that it's never going to end, but it did. 90 minutes later, both kids were asleep and Mum was finished. Well done. Oh, darling. Thank you. You really held on in there. Yeah. With the kids now quietly asleep, it's time for me to leave for several days so that I can see exactly how Mum and Dad are going to handle the situation while I'm gone. I'm going to make tracks off for just a few days, leaving you guys to follow through with the techniques. OK. I am a little nervous about her leaving and not being there with us to kind of guide us through. OK, you're welcome, OK? We're going to make mistakes. We're going to still do things the wrong way, but you have to learn to do it without Joe now. Away for a bit, so I'm wondering how this family have got on and how it's going with little Eric. One to ten, how well do you think you've done? Eight. Eight. Like it. So let's take a look at our first clip here. Get in bed. Come on. Get up in your bed. Out of curiosity, was that the truth or...? She did. She did, OK. Yeah. Be, be aware of it. If it gets her out of bed and she knows that, she'll stick with that. Absolutely marvellous. Such a good job. You executed that technique so well. Look at the results you got. And I slept last night, like straight through for the first night in a while. So, so you feel good today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a proper night's sleep. More of those, but... It's a good dose of medicine, right? Yeah.
Responsibilities. How has that been going? It's been going good. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at that. Want me to make Luke and Lily's bed? No, I'll do it. Hi, guys. Hi, Daddy. That is. <laughs> what about mine, Lee? Another good piece of footage there, showing you guys knuckling down and taking on your responsibilities mm -hmm. and, and really working together, being in sync with that. Makes me feel good to take some of the pressure off of him, too. Although it seems like, a, you know, a little thing, knowing that, you know, I have more time with the kids means a lot. Means yeah. a lot to me. So, Eric's manners, do we feel that he has improved? You're shaking your head already. No. No. All right, well, let's just take a look and see what he has to say for himself. If you take the laptop with you, I'm going to take it away and your phone. Give it to me. Turn on moment. Yeah, well, you know what? And because you're disrespectful, you're not getting it back. This is just stupid. Give me your phone. No. I'm going to uh, give me your phone now. I'm not going to ask not you again. You. Give me your phone. No. Give me the phone. No. If you don't give me the phone, then I'm going to wait till Daddy comes home and he's going to take it. All right, he can take it. I'm trying to suspend the service on one of the phones um, for my account. Just maybe like a week or two. OK, right, it's immediate. OK, great. You canceled my phone. You canceled it. You couldn't. Listen to me, do me a favor. I have all the favors I do for you. Later on, when the kids are in bed, just sit down with her and apologize to her for talking back to her, OK? And we'll take the next step from there about your phone. I'm still trying to get over what he said when you left. <laughs> it's not funny. I know it is. But I'm surprised that he even said it. I'm well, he's... Yeah, it's being disrespectful. But overall, the situation could have been handled a lot better. When you come home and you went into that room to speak to Eric, you were the peacemaker. You know, if I could get him to say sorry, then maybe it will just put a Band-Aid over the situation, rather than stepping up as the man of the house. After hearing that, I would have expected you to have very clearly have stood by Elise in the fact that he was wrong with how he chose to behave. So there's tough decisions that you guys need to make and follow through on when it comes to Eric, but there's still more hard work that we guys need to do together. So are we still up for that hard work? Mm -hmm. We are. Good. Yeah. We are. Mum and Dad are still having issues with their 13-year-old son, Eric. He's being disrespectful. So I've got a cheeky little technique to give that boy. He's got to get three simple answers from his parents, from the questions I'm going to give him. This is about how smart you are with your communication skills. But then I told Mum and Dad, don't give the answers, no matter what. I want you to give him everything he gives you. This is role reversal. Yeah. Wait a second, Eric. Bro. Like, wait a minute, Eric, I'm doing something. Eric's attitude is that I don't care. You know, I'm better than everyone attitude right now. Wow. I go skiing on Saturday? I can't right now. I'm, uh, I'm doing something. What? I'm doing something right now. Tell me, just give me an answer. I'm doing something right now. I started going to ask my parents the questions, and they started texting and not ignoring me and uh, listening to their iPods. Can I go skating? Oh. We ignored him. We were rude to him. We didn't look in his eyes. Ma. Ma. Can I go skating? Um, wait a minute. Can, can I go skating? Wait a minute, I'm busy. We gave him the treatment that he gives us. Three questions. They're ignoring me. Yeah, they're ignoring you. Eric's got the points. There's no two ways about that. So I gathered the whole family together to ask Eric what he learned from the experience. I noticed after a while they were doing what I was doing, that's disrespectful. Oh, the light bulb switching on, dude. Give me five. It was nice that he recognized 
that that's how he acts towards us. All right, now tell me how that made you feel when you were trying to get those three questions I needed out of you. Aggravated that they weren't answering me. <laughs> I learned that I should pay attention to my parents more when they talk to me. So I hope that was a valuable lesson, was it? It was. Yes. yes. I'll give me a kiss. <laughs> The final thing I want to do is really encourage Eric to spend more time with his family. So I'm going to take them all bowling so that he can realise there's actually fun hanging out with his family. Come down. There you go. Nice throw. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was nice to spend, you know, good family quality time together with the kids. <laughs> Roll it. Go like this. Little Ark was interacting with Luke and Lily and Ashley and kind of having fun with them. It was nice. It was nice to see. There you go. <laughs> I never get out with my family, so it was fun. They were uh, well behaved for a change. What have you learned from today? I learned that I shouldn't be downstairs my whole life. That's what I'm talking about. There you go, buddy. Today was different. We had a good time today. Good job. It was really great to see this family having a laugh and just enjoying being together, so I really hope that it's motivated this family to do more things together in the future. Good girl. Yeah. Yeah. Time for me to go, so I'm going to say goodbye to all of you. We probably would have never made these changes without Joe coming. Joe really opened our eyes in the sense of what was going wrong in the house. Joe, you are wicked awesome. It was lovely, it was lovely. Hey, come here. Here's a hug. Joe, thank you for coming to my house. I'm going to say please and thank you from now on in these manners. Bye-bye. Have a hug. Bye, Eric. Take care. Keep up the work, yeah? We are different as a family now. Ashley, keep up with your swimming. We're more all together now on the same page. It was worth it. Absolutely. I'm, I'm now going now, OK? So what do we say? What do you say? <laughs>